Hello Year One and welcome to Tuesday's Literacy Lesson. I'm just going to share my screen with you so that you can see what it is we're going to be learning about today. Now, if you remember yesterday we looked at the suffixes er uh, and est. Today we're coming away from that a little bit but I still want you to remember about adding suffixes to our words. So we are going to continue to look at est when we do our instructions today. Now, we are going to be exploring how do brilliant writers sequence a set of instructions. So to start with, we'll do a warm up again with our common exception words. And today I'll go a little bit quicker and see if you can read them really fast for me. Then we're going to look at instructions. And then after that, you're going to have a go at creating a set of instructions for me, making sure you put them in the right order. And then finally, I've got some instructions and they're a bit muddled up and I need your help to sequence them and put them in the correct order. So let's get started with our first activity. So we're going to go over our common exception words. I've given them a good shuffle so that they're in a different order today. And we'll start with my turn, your turn, and then it will be your turn on your own. And we'll see if you can go quicker than you did yesterday. Here we go. And you can see Trixie's just over there trying to watch us to see if she can trick us out. I don't think she will. You guys are too brilliant for that. Here we go. My. Come. Your. By. His. Were. Has. Some. One. Fantastic, guys. Now you're going to have a go at doing these by yourself. Ready, steady, go. Fantastic. If you found that too fast for you, just go back to the one where we did it together and keep practicing until you can get really speedy. Maybe you could even ask your adult to write them down for you and have a go at reading them every single day. Fantastic. Now, for today's lesson, you're going to need your pencil, your whiteboard and your notebook, and also that brilliant brain. Whilst we've been in lockdown, all the teachers in year one have been reading lots and lots of fairy tales. We do love our fairy tales. And there's one thing that appears in all these fairy tales, and that is a fairy godmother. Now we have had our very own fairy godmother come and she has given us a very, very magical spell that we can use to create a magic hat. So today we are going to look at what the instructions are that we need to follow to be able to create a magic hat. Now, these are the instructions that she's given us. So let's just take a second to have a look at everything on this page. First of all, my first thing I can see are all these fantastic hats, all these pictures showing me what our final product should look like, which is really good. We need to know what it is we're going to make, don't we? We need to know what it's going to look like. We need some idea. So having a picture on our instructions is always really helpful. I can also see at the top here, I've got my title, How to Create a Magic Hat. It's telling me what I need to create. So that's another feature of my instructions. And then one of the most important features of our instructions are the numbers down the side. Can you see here? One two, three, four, five, and six. Now that is helping me to know that I need to follow a sequence. I need to follow these instructions in order. If I do them wrong, I might not end up with a magic hat. Maybe I'll end up with a potion to turn somebody into a frog. And I really don't want that. So I need to make sure that I follow my instructions in order by following the numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, fingers crossed, I'll end up with that magic hat. So let's just have a look at the words now, because when we're writing instructions, there's certain words we need to use. And if you remember, at the beginning of the video, I said we were going to come away from looking at our suffixes, but that I would still like you to try and use them in these instructions. You might be able to spot some suffixes 
in my sentences. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video, have a look and write down on your whiteboard any words that contain suffixes. Remember, we're looking for the est suffix today, the est at the end of a word. OK, good luck and then click play when you're ready and I'll carry on. Fantastic. Hopefully you have spotted all the ones I've highlighted in pink. So we have the word wettest, fattest, sweetest, darkest, sharpest, meanest, dirtiest, deepest, biggest and smallest. Now these are all very very important words. They are giving us instructions and they are helping us to know exactly what it is we need to get. But there are some other words in, this, in these instructions that are very, very important and they are called verbs. Now verbs are bossy words. They tell us what we need to do. I wonder I'm going to read through the sentences this time and see if you can pick out any words which are telling us what we need to do. I might do some actions to help you out. Start with pouring one drop of the wettest tear from the fattest slug into a bowl. Mix in seven cups of the sweetest bluebells from the darkest forest. Whisk the sharpest tooth from the meanest shark's jaw. Pour in the dirtiest water from the deepest well. Fold, we got a spoon and we're folding in. Fold in the biggest sneeze from the smallest spider into the pot. Mix all together while saying the words, suffixes, verbs and instructions to make me a magical hat as good as new. So hopefully by my actions you might be able to now pick out those verbs, those doing words, the things that it's telling us to do. I've given you a few here so that you can see what they are. So we've got start, stirring, drop, these are all bossy. We've got mix, whisk, drop, fold and, and mix again. Now these are all bossy verbs. They are telling us what we need to do. Ah, now our fairy godmother's got a little bit of a reminder for us. She says, now remember, whenever you are following instructions to make a potion, you must follow them in the right order, or you could end up with something rather peculiar. And that's what I was saying to you earlier, if you remember. We don't want to follow our instructions the wrong way round. We don't want to start down here and then jump up here and then go back to this bottom one and then go to here and then here and then here. Like I said, I might end up with a potion to make a magical frog. And I don't want a potion to make a magical frog. I want a potion to make a magic hat. And so today, I would like you to have a go at sequencing some instructions for me. I've given you some different activities. So if you're going to have a go at the green task, your job is to spell words or write some captions or short sentences to match the pictures to create a potion. So you could have black crow or blackest feather. You could have sharpest horn. You could try and write longest tail. They're just some ideas. I'm sure you will have much better ones than mine. If you're going to do the yellow task today, you are going to have a go at completing the spell that I have already written out. Now, I forgot to mention that this spell is to make a magical broom. So, again, you will spot on our instructions that we have the numbers in order. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
One, two, three. We need to follow them in order. We need to make sure we keep our instructions in the right order. Otherwise, we'll end up with the wrong thing. And we don't want to make anything other than a magical broom. So, I've started the sentence, drop in the something feather from the something crow. Another one, great, then stir in the something horn from the something unicorn. Stir in the, again it's blank, tail from the rat. What I need you to do is add in some words here. And whilst you're adding these words in, it would be fantastic if you can remember to add in words that contain our est suffix that we have been using. So I imagine these words are all going to be adjectives and you are going to change the end of those adjectives to say est. Good luck. And finally, if you are in the red activity, you feel like having this, this, this task today, um, then I've got a bit of a problem. I've lost the last two sets of instructions from my spell. Can you help me by writing them for me? So, the first lot of instructions are one, mix in a drop of the greenest slime from the fattest slug. Two, stir in the hardest shell from the slowest snail. Three, whisk in the brightest scales from the quickest fish. I wonder if you could add on the next set of instructions. Maybe you could look to the green or the yellow task to give you some ideas about what you could use. And I have even spotted myself. that I forgot my full stop there. It's really important that after each instruction, we finish with a full stop and we start our instructions with a capital letter. Good luck and I can't wait to see what you've done. Pause now, have a go at your activities and then come back to see if you can do my final task. Good luck. Okay, here I have got a list of instructions. Now, I've got some things that are a little bit wrong. Remember what we said about when we're sequencing those instructions, it's really important they are in the right order. You can also see I've got a long line here. I haven't got a title. I don't know what it is my instructions are making. Hmm, that's definitely not right, is it? I wonder if you can pause the screen and work out what's gone wrong with my sentences. I'll give you a clue. Look at the numbers. Fantastic. Now, this is much better. If you see in pink, these are the bits that I've corrected. So, how to make a magical wand? Of course, we need a title when we're writing instructions. Everybody who's going to follow a set of instructions or a magical spell needs to know what it is that they are making. And then I have got my numbers and I've now got my instructions in the right order. And I know they're in the right order because I start at one, and I go down to two, then to three, then to four, then to five, and finally to six. So hopefully, if I follow all these instructions in the right order, I will end up with my magical wand. The only way I could have made this even better is if I left a picture, maybe just here, of what the magical wand should look like when it's finished. Well done for your work today, everybody. Remember to ask your grown-ups to take photos of all your brilliant work and send it to us on our tapestry so that we can have a look and share with you our thoughts. Fantastic. Good work today, everybody. And goodbye, and I'll see you tomorrow.